as Ryan Henson Creighton. Uh, I've been playing board games since I was a kid. I think most people play them when they're first like Wii Tykes, right? I just remember you go over to someone's house as a kid and everybody kind of has this broom closet, right? They've got the linens, they've got the vacuum cleaner, and then two shelves, they got like four or five board games all stacked up there. Usually something from Parker Brothers or Milton Bradley. Oh, what inspired me? What inspired me was everybody else doing it very badly. <laughs> So I would watch board game how to play videos on YouTube and I think like why aren't they using Graphics or animation like why do I have to watch some dudes big hairy meaty ham hands get into the shot and like move stuff around it's so unattractive I thought man you could really do something cool if you did like Stop-motion animation you did grab you know move you know graphics around and animate them. I thought that would be really really cool Since I've started doing it. I understand why nobody else does it. It's because it takes a bloody long time uh but th yeah that that's what it was it was motivation to do it right i'm a, I'm a creative fellow so it's hard to find jobs where i'll, I'll not uh be super bored so i i started my well I, i've been a clerk at a video game store been a clerk at a video store i've made video games i was at ytv for seven years and then i had my own video game studio and i ran that for seven years that was called untold entertainment and then I ran an escape game company in uh, Summerhill, uh, and our game was called Escape the Book Club Killer. And then I was a creative writer on one of these uh, mysterious gift companies that sends out like weird stuff in the mail, including cursed artifacts that you pull out of crates with a crowbar. And currently I'm working on a virtual reality game. So I've been a game and a puzzle designer for around 22 years. So after starting the channel, I had a few odd jobs here and there. So I worked with, uh, you know, I consulted with one company who was working with uh, augmented reality. Um, I've done uh, some puzzle design for a couple of companies. I worked with the CBC and I designed a human scavenger hunt in London for a show called Murdoch Mysteries, which takes place in um, the Edwardian era. So we went and dressed a bunch of actors up in like Edwardian era dress and you had to get little puzzles on postcards and solve them and they would lead you to the next person. It was all around the Tower Ridge area of London. That was pretty special. My number one board game, I don't like to talk about it because the company is mean and money grubbing and not nice to their customers. So I won't mention that one, but uh, I played a really great game that's like my number two game called uh, Sea of Legends which is a pirate storytelling game and, and it's it's got fantasy elements uh, so you've got you know you can face off against the British army or the Dutch or like a kraken or you know some sort of you know mermaids or whatever that one's really cool I really love a game called Orléans uh, which is like we call it a bag builder it takes place in medieval Europe and you're fighting the plague and you're 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 just trying to get a medieval village going one's called Praga Kaput Regni where you are building out uh, Prague and again in, in medieval times there's a lot of medieval stuff uh, obsession is a really cool one so that's sort of like in the Jane Austen tradition so you are you have a homestead and you uh, like and you're broke but you're trying to get back into uh, good graces with the upper crust society it's very it's very hoity-toity and fun and the theme is really good oh man there's so many there's so many good ones so many good games so this is interesting because there's a there's a shift, right? So when I started, nobody's gonna give me the time of day. They don't know me from Adam. They're not gonna pay me to do anything. So I would just grab games that I had in my collection already or games that I was interested in and make videos from that. From that process, I learned that the smarter way to do it is to find games that a lot of people want to play that has a rule book that sucks. And my videos help people learn how to play it much better. But then after I started, I don't wanna say made a name for myself, but did it for a number of years and, and word got around that I, I guess I did a good job and so now the way I decide is who will pay me money to do it <laughs> so it's entirely uh, commission based and very rarely will I do one of my own reconnaissance only because I have this other job that I'm doing this VR game development job so I'm doing it for I'm doing it for the cash baby yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe people who are watching this might wonder, should I make board game videos? The answer is no. Uh, and the reason is that there's not enough broad appeal. If you, sorry, if you love it, of course, go do it. But if you want to make money at it, don't do it. Yeah, this, uh, this doesn't pay any bills, uh, but it's lots of fun and people are really, really nice. So I get almost exclusively wonderful comments on YouTube. So that's a nice pick me up, having people say nice things about you all the time. You can't go wrong with that. 